we meet in the name of God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God is one. Amen. How important is the wrapping up of your presence? Does it make any difference to what's inside? Do we choose our friends by what they are wearing? I hope not. I hope we choose them because they are nice inside. Today we are going to hear how God went about choosing a new king for his people. I wonder who God will choose. Let's open the book. Let's take a look. Let's listen and see how good God can be. Oh, let's take a look. Let's open the book. Let's open the book to the Bible story called Samuel the Kingmaker. With God's help, Samuel led God's people. But when Samuel grew old, the people asked him for something that made him sad. Everybody else has a king, so why can't we have a king too? Samuel told God about this and God helped him to feel better. It's not you they don't want. It's me. I'm their true king. But sometimes they just can't see it. So tell the people they can have a king if they want. But tell them the truth. Tell them that it won't make their lives any easier. So that's what Samuel did. God says you can have a king. He told the people. But he wants you to know what that will mean. A king will turn your sons into soldiers and your daughters into housemaids and your grain and your gold into gifts for his special friends. In other words, he will make you his slaves. It didn't sound very nice, but the people still wanted a king. So Samuel found them one, a tall and handsome man called Saul. Saul did well for a while. Then he stopped listening to Samuel and he stopped obeying God. So God told Samuel to find another king. Go to Bethlehem. Find a man named Jesse. If the people must have a king, then it should be someone who loves me and trusts me and will follow me. That someone is one of Jesse's sons. So Samuel went to Bethlehem, and when he laid his eyes on Jesse's oldest son, Eliab, Samuel was sure that Eliab was the one. God was sure too, sure that Samuel was wrong. He may be tall, but so was Saul, and remember how he turned out. And then God said something very important. You can only see what people look like on the outside, Samuel. But I can look inside them, deep down into their hearts. And it's what's on the inside of a person that matters most to me. So Samuel moved on to Jesse's other sons while God looked into their hearts. How about the second son? No. Try again. The third son? Afraid not. The fourth son? No way. The fifth son? <laughs> you must be joking. The sixth, the sixth son. Not a chance. Uh, the seventh, the seventh son then. He's the only one left. You'll have to look harder because he's not the one either. 
I don't suppose you have any more sons? Well, there's the youngest, but he's out in the field looking after the sheep. Uh, fetch him, quick as you can. And when the boy appeared, God whispered to Samuel, That's the one. His heart is pure and true. He longs to follow me. So Samuel poured oil on the head of Jesse's youngest son as a sign that God wanted him to do something special and that one day he would be king. And the youngest son's name was David. Well, that was a surprise. I would have expected one of those big, handsome sons to be chosen as king, not David, who could so easily have been overlooked. Over the next few weeks, we'll be hearing stories about how David became one of the most famous kings in the Bible. Do you remember what God said to Samuel? God said he looked at what people were like inside, not how good looking or strong they were, Think about a time when you've forgotten to look on the inside of someone and only cared about the outside, what they looked like, or the things they had or didn't have. Think about what that person was really like on the inside. Now I'm going to say a prayer, and if you want to make it your prayer, say Amen at the end after me. Thank you, God, that the important part of us is what is on the inside, in our hearts and in our thoughts, and not what is on the outside. Amen. Bye. Bye. Bye.